fellow Wireshark users and packet sniffers, I have another video how to with Wireshark. In this particular video, what I'm going to deal with is something called name resolution and using name resolution files. This is a really handy capability of Wireshark. Let's jump right in and I'll explain some of the use cases as we go. So first of all, I'm going to start up Wireshark here. And I'm going to do just a little local packet capture on my machine. Now, I think I'm plugged into Ethernet. Yes, I am right there. So let's just do a little packet capture here. And while that's running, I'm also going to generate some traffic. OK, I'm going to ping my local gateway which is 192.168.1.1. Most of you will have the exact same gateway. So, so this traffic is now included in my packet capture. I'm also going to ping uh, .1.18, which I happen to know is my MacBook. So we'll ping that. Uh, ping 192.168.1.250. That, I believe, is the printer. I think it is. Um, and then ping 192.168.1.250. One, yeah. That is a shared disk, um, and ping one ninety two one sixty eight dot one dot two fifty two. So there's a couple of ports on that disk system, so I've just pinged both ports on it. Okay, so basically what I've done here in in this is I've just created some traffic now in my packet capture. OK, that's all I did. All right, let's bring this back to the foreground and stop the packet capture. Now, one of the cool features of Wireshark, and it isn't on by default in your default profile, by the way, is name resolution. OK, so what Wireshark can do if I go to the view menu and I turn on name resolution for network addresses, what will happen is Wireshark will actually go out and you just saw the change right here. I don't know if you noticed it. But it will go out and it will look for these IP addresses in the public domain off the DNS server and it will resolve those names and then tell you who it is. OK, so you'll see this now if I kind of scroll back up here, there's probably several in here for that kind of thing. There you go. You can see another name resolution there, etc. OK, the problem is that it only does this for, you know, DNS names. Now, if you work in a company where this is, there's a DNS server and you have this, this might be good enough. Okay. But for a lot of us, we use private addresses, you know, behind the scenes and so forth for some of our network. So if I do an, a filter, so if I say IP.ADDR equals equals 192.168.1.1, this is a display filter. You can see that even though I have that name resolution turned on, it's not resolving these local addresses. Okay. Because they're not in the DNS. All right, so let me turn it off and we're going to make a change. OK, so I've turned it off. Now what I want to do is I want to create a name resolution file. Now Wireshark requires that this is called hosts. OK, it's a text file, but there's a trick to this. OK, and it's a trick that stumps most people. And that is that you have to save the file with no extension. OK, so let's create, first of all, the host file. So I'm going to open up a just a you know, text editor. I use Notepad++, but you can use anything. You know, you can use Notepad or whatever just to create a plain text file. We're going to start with the hashtag because this is the comment indicator. And we're just going to give this a name. And I, I urge you to use this as a best practice, right? So that when you have multiple host files under different profiles and stuff like that, you can keep track of, you know, which host file does what resolution. Okay. So I'm going to say name resolution for the home network. Uh, and again, you can comment out as many lines as you want. You can put as much information in there as you wish. After that sort of commented information, you now need to list what IP address is given what name. Now, the name cannot have any spaces in it. It must be a contiguous set of characters, OK? So first of all, it starts with IP address, 192.168.1.1. And uh, we'll give this the name of home underscore gateway underscore router okay uh, again no spaces okay so I've used the underscore as 
essentially the space. Now you could use dashes or you could just use you know none at all and you could just name it something like that. Uh, let's add the other things uh, 192.168.1 I think I did dot 18 which was the MacBook Pro. There you go. And what else did I do? Uh, 192.168.1.25 50, was it or was it 251 I think it was 250 and that was the HP underscore printer and let's see 192 oops dot 168.1.251 was the disk system underscore port one something like that and 192.168.1.252 was the disk system underscore port two. Okay, so so knowing that this had two ports, knowing that they have two IP addresses, this is perfect. And oh, I just happened to notice in the background, uh, since I had that filter, that my IP address uh, must have been 1.20. So let's put that into 192.168.1.20 is my underscore HP underscore laptop something like that okay so i've created basically this little cheat sheet for wireshark to use to do the name resolution for these ipv4 addresses all right now the key here is how we save this file if we go back to wireshark for a second and we go to help and then about wireshark and to the folders tab and then double click the personal configuration. This will open up a file manager that will navigate in this path to where my personal configuration is. Okay. And you can see that my profiles are right here. All right. Now I only want to use this name resolution for when I'm looking at my home network. And I know right now I do not have a profile. If I go in here, there is no profile for my home network. Okay. So let's go back to Wireshark and we'll close this. And what we want to do is right click down here and say new to create a new profile and we'll call it home network. Okay, and I would urge you to do the similar thing, you know, so that when you create these, these resolution files that you create them sort of for the network that you're in. Now, if you're in just one network every day and you work for that network, you can just put this in your generic you know, configuration area. You don't have to put it under the profile, but you can store these by profile. So you can have different name resolution files for different profiles. And that's what I want to show you because that's the thing that I do most of the time. All right, so I've created that and I'll say, okay. And then what we want to do is switch to, whoops, make sure it has switched to the home network, which it, it has done because I can tell the, the fonts smaller. So I'll make the font bigger. There we go. And I'll just space this stuff out a little bit, right? Which you would normally do to customize your profile or whatever. I don't want to go into a, a big customization. There's another video on that and I'll put a link to that. All right, so very good, right? And uh, now let's take a look and see if we can enact this. Now, first thing we have to do is save this profile that we created back here in the, in the text editor, save it under this profile because this profile now exists as we will see. All right, so I'm gonna say file, save as. Now, this is the tricky part. You have to be very, very careful. First of all, we need to navigate to that profile. OK, and if you remember, it's under this PC, OK, on the C drive, under users, OK, my user. Then we went to app data, roaming, then to Wireshark. Right. And there we go. There's all the personal configuration. So under profiles, I'm now going to find there it is the home network profile. OK, so I'm going to double click that. You can see there's nothing in here right now, which is fine. But I want to save this file here. Now, most text editors will default to the .txt extension. So we need to call this hosts. 
but we don't want to have any extension. And what a lot of people will do here is they'll say, you know, dot, and then they'll do like space, 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 thinking that that's going to make it with no extension. And it doesn't always work, right? So I'm gonna delete that. And what we have to make sure is that we're not selecting any preset extension, okay? not selecting any preset extension. All right, so I'm going to click on save. And now let's verify this, right? Let's go to our file manager, go into profiles, go into home network, and there's the file. And you can see that Windows, in my example, doesn't recognize this as a text file, even though it is. And that is my verification that I've done it right. If this says .txt or says text file, it's probably got the txt extension. Okay, and that's that will not work properly. All right, so I've got this hosts file now here. Let's go back to Wireshark. All right, and watch this. I'm going to go to View, Name Resolution, and I'm going to click on Resolve Network Addresses. Now, in order to actually get it to read that file, I need to refresh, right? So I'm just going to say Reload this, and there you go. Look at that, all those 192.168 addresses just changed. Instead of 192.168.1.20, it says my HTTP laptop. And instead of 192.168.1.1, it says home gateway router, okay? And we could check a couple of other things, like watch this. If I change this filter to 20, which was anything to or from my laptop, all right, and I scroll down through here, we're going to see some of those other addresses where I did the pings. In fact, we might have to look a little bit here, but there we go. Those are the pings to the home gateway. And then after that, I pinged the MacBook Pro. There you go. There's the pings to the MacBook Pro. And there's the pings to the HP printer. Okay, this is all looking exactly what we would expect. And then the disk system, port one and then disk system port two. So this is perfect, right? This has now basically replaced the numbers with those names. So it makes it easier for me to read and for me to understand. Imagine the use cases for this. If you work in a central office, let's say, and you have a voice switch, right? An IP voice switch you can have a host file so that every time a packet goes or leaves that voice switch in your packet capture, it'll say voice switch. Or if you have some port, you can also do name resolution with MAC addresses. It's the same concept. You create a file just like this, but instead of the IPv4 addresses and a name, what you do is you put the MAC address and the name, and then you do layer two resolution. You have to save this instead of hosts, you call it ethers. Again, with no .txt, and you can do name resolution at layer two as well, okay? So lots of use cases, lots of ways to simplify what you're looking at and to make it more human readable for you by using this capability of Wireshark. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope it makes it clear to you exactly how to use the name resolution capability of Wireshark. And remember to capture every day. See you in the next video.